Let's all give Dr. Westbrook and the Sound and the Fury another round of applause for being here with us today. Well, good morning, Texan family, and welcome to the 2023 State of the University Address. I'm Credence Baker, Vice President of University Strategy and Chief of Staff to President Hurley. At this time, I ask all who are able to please stand for the posting of the colors and the singing of the national anthem. Please be seated. Just beautiful. Let's all thank the T Tarleton Corps of Cadets Color Guard as well as Dr. Robertson and the Tarleton Choir for being here today. Every day at Tarleton is a great day to be a Texan, especially Purple Thursdays. This long-standing tradition of ours reminds us each week of our shared purpose in being here, the people and place we serve, and the passion we all have to bleed purple. Today, we celebrate your hard work and support and the many milestones from the last year that continue to propel our university forward. Before we get started, I would like to recognize several special guests that we're honored to have joining us today. To start, please help me give a warm welcome to our lovely First Lady, Ms. Kendall Hurley.
Next, help me welcome Stephenville City Mayor, Mr. Doug Savine. <laughs> Along with City of Stephenville Director of Administrative Services, Mr. Daryl Brown. Welcome back, Daryl. <laughs> we also have Erath County Judge, Mr. Brandon Huckabee in attendance. We're also blessed to have Tarleton Foundation board members J.C. Johnson, Justin Haskey, Janice Patronis, Richard Patronis, Susan Poynier, Reggie Underwood, Jill Farr, and Bo Farr. Would you all rise and let us welcome you? And we would be remiss if we didn't give a warm welcome to Tarleton's beloved and legendary friend in attendance today, Mr. Dwayne Mayfield. Please also welcome the Leadership Stephenville Class of 24 in attendance, along with President and CEO of the Stephenville Chamber of Comber Commerce, July Danley. <laughs> also joining us this morning are seven members of the Student Government Association executive team. Would you all let us welcome you? And I'd like to also recognize our exceptional leadership team. Would the Tarleton Executive Cabinet and Deans please stand? And now, to bring greetings on behalf of the Tarleton student body and to introduce President Hurley, please welcome our student body president, Mr. Billy Snipes, to the podium. Good morning. Tarleton faculty, staff, administration, and friends. It is an honor to be here today to help tell the story of why what you do each and every day makes a difference in the lives of Tarleton students. As student body president, I have the chance to witness this firsthand as I work alongside our SGA to represent our fellow Texans. I can tell you that our president and first lady, Dr. and Mrs. Hurley, have one true focus here at Tarleton, our success. They attend almost every student event, cheer us on, open their home to us, and encourage us to achieve our goals. They, along with our faculty and staff, inspire us to do better, be better, and show the world how great it is to be a Tarleton Texan. Together, we're witnessing history in the making as Tarleton continues to prove that this purple won't fade. Don't just take my word for it. Please join me in hearing from two of my fellow Texans, Ethan and Tatum, as they share the great things that, that are taking place at our outstanding university. We've always known it. Tarleton State Texans are trailblazers. We inspire others and challenge the status quo. We rise through research and champion change. We lead with confidence. Our brand promise, this purple won't fade. Fits us to a T. Academics. The arts. Athletics. Innovation. Instruction. Indomitable spirit. We just keep moving forward. Student experience and opportunity. Tarleton State's rise from a rural community college to a national comprehensive university is one of the most impressive stories in the history of post-secondary education. We're proud how we serve our students and elevate our region, our state, and our nation. Our students and alumni are pretty proud too. The Wall Street Journal ranks Tarleton State fifth among universities highly recommended by students and recent graduates. So it's come at no surprise that more and more students want to be Tarleton Texans. That's why we had to add a fifth duck camp just before the fall semester. The percentage of freshmen and transfer students who attend summer orientation, a big 70%, is among the highest in the nation. And overall, fall enrollment is up 8.6% from a year ago. That's over 16,000 students. Hispanic students are deep into that mix. Nuestro Destino, reaching 25 by 25, is our initiative to increase Tarleton's Hispanic enrollment to 25% by 2025. We're serving Texans of every background at a higher rate than ever before, including first generation and high school dual credit students. Nearly 2,000 students earn university credit in agriculture and STEM areas while completing requirements at Texas high schools. 
Make no mistake, Tarleton State University's future is bright. Academic pathways and research. When it comes to life-changing research, market-savvy degree programs, and innovative partnerships, we lead the charge. A team of engineering students and faculty spent their summer participating in NASA's CubeSat launch initiative. Tarleton State was one of only eight schools and the only one in Texas selected for the University Nanosatellite Program. We're also celebrating our largest ever increase in total and restricted research expenditures, 20 million. The new Institute for Rural Economic Development and Research will merge discovery and innovation to grow industries and foster job opportunities. And a $7 million research administration building will create an ecosystem to accelerate sponsored discovery and strengthen regional partnerships. Tarleton's new Biotechnology Institute puts the university in the middle of one of the fastest growing life sciences hotbeds in the country. And an expanded partnership with Fossil Rim Wildlife Center adds a faculty and residents and hands-on student internship opportunities. Facility growth and enhancement. We officially broke ground on a facility that will benefit the entire region. We'll build it, they'll come. At a whopping 148,000 square feet, the $110 million two-story multi-purpose arena will sport NCAA Division I basketball facilities and room for symposiums, conferences, conventions, convocation, and commencement. Sand volleyball courts are coming behind the Aquatic Center in preparation for our first season of NCAA Division I Beach Volleyball. And six new tennis courts will showcase elevated bleachers and fresh lighting. We'll soon break ground on a new health sciences building in Stephenville. And an expansion of the Dick Smith Library will provide an around-the-clock study area. Construction for our second building in Fort Worth is right on schedule too. A&M University System endorsement of our fiscal capital plan means additional housing for students in Stephenville. Planning is underway and construction will begin soon for a 1,000 bed residence hall on our main campus. All of that comes with more parking. Three new, well-lit paved parking lots are ready for use. And that crane soaring above campus marks progress on the university's first multi-level parking garage set to open in 2025. D1 Athletics and World Championship Rodeo. Texan Nation is second to none when it comes to cheering on the purple and the white. Our intercollegiate athletics are elevating Tarleton State University to new heights. The enthusiasm from our students and our fans are showing the state of Texas and the nation that Texan pride is unmatched. Tarleton State has taken athletics into prime time. We're challenging Power 5 opponents like Texas Tech, A&M, Alabama, and the Army Black Knights. Making a splash on network television and bringing new visibility to the Tarleton State brand like never before. Tarleton football is one of just four teams in NCAA history to start a reclassification to Division I with three straight winning seasons. And since the start of 2018, Tarleton State has the highest winning percentage of any scholarship program in Texas. Women's soccer made its NCAA debut last fall, while men's golf enjoyed its rebirth after a 30-year break. Men's basketball was the first team to qualify for the WAC Championship Tournament and won their first showing in Las Vegas. Tennis followed up its WAC Division Championship season with a berth in the WAC Tournament title match last spring. Softball made its second straight trip to the postseason, and track and field has six WAC Outdoor Champions and three indoor medalists. And our students did it all while attaining one of the highest multi-year academic progress rates of any school in NCAA history transitioning to D1. Almost 140 student athletes are academic all WAC with a 3.2 GPA or higher. And to top it off, we earned eight spots at the College National Finals Rodeo this summer in Casper, Wyoming. Sophomore Gus Galliard took sixth place overall in saddle bronc riding. These achievements in and out of the classroom are just the beginning. Affinity and donor support. Yet again, Tarleton State powered past its largest ever comprehensive capital campaign goal, this time 18 months early. It's a testament to the incredible generosity of our visionary alumni, partners, and friends. This spring, we celebrated the naming of our College of Engineering in honor of longtime benefactor, Dr. Dwayne Mayfield, marking the first time Tarleton has named an academic college for an individual. Alumnus and legendary businessman, Sam Pack, earned an honorary doctorate for his leadership and goodwill. And we presented two-time graduate, Henry Hohenberger, with a pair of handcrafted Tarleton boots at the 2023 gala. 
All three have given liberally to Tarleton State over the years, as have countless others. Scholarship awards are up 27%, and institutional aid has doubled. Our fiscal 2024 operating budget, $289 million, is the largest in university history. We're turbocharging the economy with a total annual impact of $2 billion for the state. That's some punch. That's Tarleton State. This purple won't fade is a story that began almost 125 years ago when John Tarleton envisioned the school his students empower, improve, and make the world a better place. Determination is what fuels greatness in every Tarleton State Texan. Our founder would be proud that we're fiercely passionate about everything that we do. It's more than a slogan. It's our greatest work. This purple won't fade. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage the 16th president of Tarleton State University, Dr. James Hurley. Thank you. Good morning and happy Purple Thursday. It's so exciting to be here. What about Tatum and Ethan? Did they not deliver an excellent state of the university? <laughs> Billy, will you come back out? I know you're, is he escaped that quickly? Is Billy still here? He just went out. Where's Billy? Billy, come out. He's elusive. These students are elusive. Come here, Billy. Would Ethan and Tatum, would you stand up as well and allow us to say thank you? <laughs> and would all of our students, do we have, any, I know we have some of Billy's uh, executive cabinet members, would they stand as well uh, uh, and allow us to say thank you for choosing Tarleton State. Thank you for being here. I want to brag on Billy just for a moment. He is not only serving as their SGA president, but just a couple nights ago, they wrapped up Bonfire. He's also a plowboy. And they are, they finished that project two weeks ahead of schedule. And I have every year, I've scaled to the top of that. This is my fifth consecutive year. And I don't know how much longer my body is going to allow me to do that, Billy. But I will tell you this. They have built us the largest, most stable bonfire in the history of Tarleton State University, so good job. <laughs> Coach Troy, Coach Gary, will you come out as well? What about the sound and the fury in our university choir to get us started? Um, <laughs> I am so thankful for the incredible work that they put in every single day. They are here um, in the summer, they're here in the winter, just year-round. It's 365 days uh, for them and their team, and they brought two new team members, and I'm so thankful for the students and our performing and fine arts. Last year, Miss Vicki told me that we had, it was, I know she's here, she's always here. There you are, 288 performances in this auditorium alone. Is that number correct? 288 performances in this auditorium alone. And so I want to make this announcement because it's not in the state of the university because Lori Beatty on Friday just allowed me to spend the money. So we are, um, we are committing $1 million of puff funds this year to upgrade this facility alone. And we're so excited. <laughs> Clearly our most utilized facility on campus and um, 288, I doubt that there are any other classrooms, labs, fields, courts, doesn't matter, that have had and conducted and, and allowed us to, to be part of 288 incredible performances. And I can tell you every single year that I've been here, I am amazed at how incredibly talented our Texans in the performing and fine arts, and we just keep getting better and better. And the Honeywell investment has paid off, and that endowment has allowed our students in our performing arts and our, and our band in particular, we are now able to provide them with the necessary equipment that Coach Gary and Coach Troy and his team 
they need to perform at, at the Division I at the highest level. And so once again, just allow me to say thank you all for all you do. Thanks, Troy. And so I, I want to be very clear, and, and I want to make this abundantly um, clear before I start. I have the privilege of standing on this stage and talking about and, and displaying and, and illustrating the great work that all of you do every single day. And I could not be more thankful for this Texan family. What an incredible year. What an incredible um, influence that each of you have and you are making in your own space. But look at this. We have nearly, I think it's over, 170 new Texans from last year to this year. So from last year's State of the University to this year, we have 170 new faces. But this is what I want you to hear. We, 96 of these new faces are brand new faculty and staff lines that we've added due to our incredible growth and our retention. One of the things that I promised behind that podium uh, five years ago now, that we would continue to invest in human capital. And I ask you if you would come alongside and help us grow this institution and create an institution of a first class destination, that we would continue to invest in the institution. And we have 96 new lines. Very few institutions in the country are doing that. A lot of universities, and we realize we're blessed here, a lot of universities across this country are struggling to keep dorms open, to keep classrooms open. They're shuttering um, lab spaces, and we're not. We're growing, we're thriving, and it's because of the excellent work that each of you are doing. So thank you so much for that. And you'll have to look really close for your name, because I'm not gonna read 170 names, but those new names, if you're here, and you're one of our new Texans, would you please stand and allow us to say thank you for joining our family? Look at that. All right. What an incredible, what an incredible place you've, you've, you've chosen to be part of. Celebrating success. So a lot of you know I'm, I love the power of three. And it's really hard just to narrow down three. And Ethan and Tatum, once again, they did just a, an incredible job of illustrating. And this is going to be just a, a, maybe a little more in-depth of the seven-minute video that Joey and his team. And that, that's the other thing. I want to thank those folks. We have an incredible communications and MARCOM team. And I would like for all of them to stand. So what are MARCOM team? A lot of them are in the back. Miss Julie, thank you for putting together the PowerPoint, doing the research, and all of, and Joey and his team, and for the videos. What an incredible story we have to tell. I want to start with their record fundraising. Uh, I'm sorry, funding. In the, it felt like fundraising as much as I was in Austin. Uh, but of course, our three legislators who are always here, they can't be here today. They each called or text to let me know that they would rather be here. They're in Austin in a special session. But they also wanted me to remind each of you how incredibly thankful um, and blessed they are to serve this institution. And so we have record funding in the 88th legislative session. We had 30.6% increase, um, and that's in, in the 88th session. We shattered our capital campaign at $125 million. In fact, we eclipsed the $140 million mark. Tony Vidmar, Vice President for Advancement, and I just met last week. He shared with me that just this year we'll close out the fiscal year because fundraising years are different for, um, for donors. It's, it's a true um, fiscal calendar, different than our fiscal calendar. We will eclipse over $30 million in new funds uh, and new philanthropy last year. That shatters any record that we've ever had. And then, of course, record enrollment and retention, which we'll talk about. All that's good, but are we doing this but, and fulfilling the mission of the institution? So our 124-year mission and our founder, John Tarleton, he created this incredible place that we all love, we all call Tarleton. He created that as an avenue of access, opportunity, and affordability. And so are we fulfilling the mission while we're increasing um, size and scope? 
I, wanna, I wanted to start with this slide because we know in our exit uh, surveys that our student success team puts out every year when our graduates walk the stage, have we fulfilled the promise? Did we deliver upon the main deliverable that you want? And over 80% of our students here at Tarleton, they identified the primary reason why they choose to go to college and why they chose Tarleton State University is to get a better job, to get a job, but to get a better job than what a high school diploma, et cetera, would afford. I want you to look at this. Tarleton State University, ranked number one in Texas. We're in the top two to three percentile in the country for the, our baccalaureate graduates that are either working or enrolled, within, uh, enrolled in a master's or doctoral or professional program within one year of graduation. 84.3%. And if you'll look, uh, we are significantly ahead of uh, Stephen F. Lamar International and Prairie View. But one of the things I like to say, and, and, and being part of the Texas A&M system, there are three of those institutions that are in the A&M system. And we're incredibly blessed and thankful for Chancellor John Sharp and our Board of Regents for their support. It's no secret, if you look around and you look at all of our campuses, not just on main campus, Chancellor Sharp and our Board of Regents and our legislators believe in what we're doing here at Tarleton. They are investing more in us than any institution in the system, and we're one of the most heavily invested in institutions in the state right now. And so a lot of people believe in what, what we're doing, and I'm so proud of that. But this is a statistic that we can all be proud of because our Texans that are walking that stage, they're making a difference beyond um, the, the other aspects of, of why they chose Tarleton. So Wall Street Journal rankings just came out a few weeks ago, and I'm gonna emphasize one ranking that we were, um, we were ranked, and that was uh, we were fifth in the nation among all institutions. In fact, we scored an 87 out of 100 on, and I want you to look at these three metrics. And so, these tell the story, the extent, and many of you that are alum, and I want to stop right there. How many alumni that do we have in the house right now? Would you stand up, stand up, and allow us to say thank you for bleeding purple? Wow, look at that. Thank you, Mama T. So, to the extent in which students would recommend their university, their school, to a friend, whether the students would choose um, to, to, to attend Tarleton if they had it to do over again, how many of us in life would have, you know, would, would like a redo, um, but not our Texans, and satisfaction within the value of the money that, that we are, that they are paying and the services that, that we have provided or rendered to our students. So I'm so, so incredibly proud of that ranking, and that's all the institutions across the country. Think about all the Ivy Leagues, the private institutions, et cetera. We're fifth in the country. So, are, again, back to access and opportunity for all students. Are we creating an opportunity for all students? Here at Tarleton, we've emphasized. Dr. Ben, our Vice President for um, Global Initiatives and First Generation Initiatives and Community Engagement, we use the term all means all. All means all. So our first goal, it, it, and the, la the other thing I want to emphasize as we keep moving on, these badges are new this year. So instead of breaking down the presentation into our five goals, we are going to incorporate the badges, as you see, and that signifies that we have achieved or we're close to achieving the um, goal that we set out four years ago in our Tarleton Forward 2030. And so we are, we are so close to achieving our HSI status. We're a little over 23%. We're, we're seeking that 25% by the year 2025 to become an HSI institution. We're laser focused on that. Our first generation de uh, designation. 51% designation. of our students are first gen. Last year, if you remember, that number is 54. And so either we collectively as higher ed institutions, a collection of higher ed institutions, are doing a better job of reducing uh, the number of students that um, need to go to college for the first time because we're educating more students, but we're still above that 50% threshold. And we were designated by the Center for First Generation Student Success. 
Very few institutions, in fact, I think it's less than 1% of institutions in the country have this designation. And here's something I'm really, really proud of. Look at the affordability. We awarded, that number is actually 29%. Um, it, and, and so it's 27% it's here, but when Lori and I were scrubbing the numbers, and, and this isn't Hurley math, this is Lori Beatty math, um, we were actually at 29%. That is both funded and unfunded aid that we're investing in our young people to ensure that the Tarleton State University degree is affordable and attainable for all students. Institutional aid, we have doubled the, the institutional aid over uh, FY23, over FY22. The number of students receiving state aid, 105% increase. So our Office of Financial Aid and Enrollment Services, they are doing an incredible job of ensuring that we um, inform and educate our students of the amount of money that's available out there for our young people. And also the state aid, look at that, increased by 64%. Goes back to that investment by our state into our institution. This is something that we conducted. This, is, this data is, is lagging, so we produce this every session. So we are in the process, we'll start in the spring of preparing for the 89th legislative session. We prepare this document in, in, in large part for our donors, but more importantly for our legislators, to tell the story. Are they making an investment into an institution that is making an impact, and is there a return on investment? Well, look at this. Tarleton State University alone had a $2 billion economic impact. Now, the reason I wanted to show this was we did this four years ago. That impact was slightly over $1 billion. So just in about a th two to three year period, we have doubled the return on investment and the economic impact that we've made for the great state of Texas and, and the country as a whole. Two billion dollars, but look at this last statistic that I want to point out. Two, 27,000 jobs supported by our institution alone. So that's incredible work. So yes, we are fulfilling the mission. Of course, you heard from um, Ethan and Tatum again about the record enrollment. It's a broken record every single year, and it, it, it's just one of the pleasures of standing up here telling that story because more and more, not only Texans, but young people from across the country and young people from across the world want to be part of our institution. But look on, the, on my left, your right. Look at the statistics. We've talked about all the, the ones on the left, the 51, the 23, the 27, but look at some of these other numbers that are just mind-blowing. 13% increase in FTIC, 5% in, uh, increase in international, five, every single metric, every single metric is an increase. 72% of, of students, or I'm sorry, student increase at our RELIS, 24% in our new masters, and we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. Let's talk about our freshman class. Those of you that are teaching or mentoring this freshman class, you know exactly what I'm getting ready to talk about. They are incredibly smart. There are a lot of them, and they are bold. They are so bold. And, they're, and, and they are leading um, and trailblazing in ways that we, we couldn't imagine. But look at this. We are up 26% from 2021, up 13% in 2022. That put our total growth at about 8.9% for the university. Javier Garza, our Vice President uh, for Student Enrollment, I'd like for Javier, would you stand up and your team stand up and allow us to say thank you for an absolute incredible job. I know we have some of his teammates. Would you all stand up? So if you're part of Javier's, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. But there is a very small, this, is, this should be bold, that I want to talk about. This is what I'm most proud of. Then you'll have to zoom in. So the top quarter, that means top 25% of our students in, the, in each new cohort, that's how we measure the, the success, that's how the coordinating board from year to year measures. Our uh, enrollment grew by 20% for the number of Tarleton Texans from 2019 to 22, compared to only 3% I'm sorry, they had a 3% decrease among all public institutions. So everyone else in the state 
they lost 3% of the top quarter students. Well, we know where they went. They came here because we have over 20%. Thank you, Mama T. Keep clapping. It's a big deal. We had a record number of top 10%, top 5%, and we had 66, was that the number? 66 valedictorians and salutatorians in this class alone. I am so proud of that. I'm so proud of that. We added duck camp, and the reason I want to emphasize duck camp is there is a statistical relevant, relevance to, for our students that attend duck camp and their success in terms of retention, persistence, and graduation. 70 plus percent of our students that attend duck camp will graduate from Tarleton. And so that's why it's imperative that we get that purple Kool-Aid, as Mike and I talk about, injected early in the summer. We added a fifth duck camp in summer of 2023. That number was up 34% year over year. Uh, record number of TTMs, of course, 70% duck camp plus percent, uh, and then also Texan orientation was up 15%. The reason I emphasize these summer immersion programs are so incredibly uh, important because, again, over half of our students are first gen. The one number I didn't emphasize is about 38 to 39 percent of our students are Pell recipients. That means they are coming from family incomes of roughly, not, I, the number, the math uh, varies from family to family, but the average is about 32 to 33 thousand dollars or less. They need us, they need you, they need your mentoring, they need your teaching, uh, they need guidance early on, and that's why our summer orientation programs are so incredibly important, and so I'm so thankful for the work they're doing. Look at this number. We have increased our retention from 62% in 18 to 74% today. The statistical, to be statistically relevant and growth with retention and graduation, this is a national metric. This is a number that, that iPads and, and other agencies use is 0.3, 0.3. Look at our growth year over year. It, it's, it's incredible. Of course, we had a slight dip during COVID. Um, I, I own that, I'll take responsibility for that. We didn't do enough. I didn't do enough as a president to ensure that we kept all those Texans. And we allowed too many of our students to fall through the cracks. And that's on me. And that's why we double down and we are incredibly focused to ensure that no Texan falls through the cracks. And we learned a lot during COVID and how to be more responsive and more nimble. We also just eclipsed the 50% rate. We have the highest graduation rate in Tarleton State history. And I'm so proud of that. <laughs> so think about when those first generation Texans walk across that stage, the, how their lives and, the, and their, the generations that will follow them, how their lives will be impacted. As many of you know, I'm a proud first generation uh, graduate. And, and I think my, my family, my, my, my sons and daughters have a better way of life today because I was able to walk that stage. And it's the same for all of our Texans that walk the stage. Partnership strategies. This has been um, a, a very strategic part of our growth and I wanna highlight these very quickly. Again, Dr. Garza and I have, we just got back on the road in spring. We blitzed uh, uh, Houston for a few days. We hit, I think, eight ISDs. Uh, we, I think we landed every single partnership that we went after, including most recently KDISD, which is the fifth largest ISD in the state of Texas. We, uh, Javier and I have visited, what's our number up to? About 158, I think 158 ISDs across the state, he and I together. And we have 120 plus partners. That number is, is, is over 130 now because we just added, again, several in the last two weeks. That program has been incredibly um, successful. It was the very first initiative that I launched as president. And Javier and I started getting on the road and visiting with superintendents. And we, we thought that if we could attract the top 25% and we could a, a increase their scholarship and make it more affordable for students, that more students would want to make Tarleton State their first choice. Our Tarleton today, we hired Dr. Uh, Matt Underwood, retired superintendent, Stephenville ISD. He is, um, he's leading the charge for this. We have over 1,000 students 
uh, in fact, I think the number's about 1,300, and that number goes up every single day. And I'm so proud of the work that, um, that he and, and Dr. Waddell and others are doing. That's going to be an incredible game changer for us because it allows those top 10-ish percent of students across high schools to have this dual enrollment with Tarleton State. Because so many of our students, as you know, are already coming to Tarleton State with an associate's degree. The last partnership that I want to talk about is our senior scholars. We started this last year. And I would like for, all, for Provost Stearns, I would like for our deans and any department chair or department head, if you would stand up for just a moment. Go ahead and stand up. Don't be bashful. Now's your chance. They put this together in about two weeks. On one of my morning runs, I came and I called Provost Stearns and I said, I, I have an idea. I think it's a decent idea. They're usually not. But will you hear me out and then can you get the deans together and see what they think? And their deans rolled up their sleeves. They, they collaborated together and they found a way for every single graduate that graduates from, from uh, Tarleton with a bachelor's degree, when they walk across that stage with that baccalaureate degree, they have an automatic and guaranteed pathway to one of our seven academic colleges. Every single college found a degree where every single graduate could enter and stay here and matriculate from that bachelor's to the master's level. We had 277 new students that took advantage of that. Look at this, 143 from the May graduation, 77 in August, and 20, and we had 27 alumni that had recently graduated that wanted to come back through this guaranteed program. That's gonna continue to increase because we, we know so many of our students now are coming out of high school with at least 30 plus hours in college credit from the dual credit programs or dual enrollment programs. Many of our students, I shouldn't say many, several of our students, but over the next three to four years, it will be the majority, are coming to college, to a four-year university setting, already holding an associate's degree via dual credit. So how can we create a matriculated pathway to ensure that we keep those students here? Because many of us know, as educators, as parents, as mentors, at the age of 17 or 18, many of our students aren't ready for the workplace or real world, if you will. And so these fifth year programs, these, these matriculated uh, pathways will, will really make a difference for our Texans. We are a first choice destination. I talked about the record number of top 5%, record number of 10%, of top 25% students, 47 countries, 48 states, 230 counties. We are still the third largest university in the state for the number of Texas counties represented we are truly covering all four corners. Now, we are missing Alaska and Maine. And I would think that those people would stop. Well, I would think they would want warmer climates, right? I thought about announcing a new dog sledding team or something that could attract them today. Lon Reisman's not here. He's with some of our uh, donors, and they're heading down to uh, Kentucky for that trip. But it just speaks volumes about how we are covering not only the, the state of Texas, the United States, but the world. And I'm really, really proud once again. And if any of you are from any of these Texas counties, and you can help us color that purple by 2025, Dr. Garza will give you a stipend out of his budget. Maybe not. New academic programs. Look at the number of research doctorates. I'm really proud of, of our academic affairs team, all of our faculty and staff. We are just blitzing our board of education, the coordinating board. Um, had a great conversation with Commissioner uh, Harrison Keller with the coordinating board, and we were talking about our growth, and he actually used us as an illustration at a national conference that he was attending, and how you can take this rural slash urban university 
and how they've innovated their way out of COVID and, and, and use this as a strategic growth uh, opportunity. Par programmatic growth is really important. We have to ensure as a comprehensive national university. Remember last year, the U United States Department of Ed redesignated Tarleton State. We are no longer a comprehensive regional university. We are moved into that top 350 university category for national comprehensive university. And so we have to ensure that we're meeting the workforce and workplace needs. We're doing that through our programmatic development. And again, I'm so thankful for our faculty and our deans and department chairs that are doing the work to ensure that we are utilizing our partners, Hanover, research, et cetera, to ensure that we're meeting the needs of the state and of the country and of the world, and we're doing that. Our goal was four years ago to have 10 PhD programs by 2030. I'm pretty confident we're gonna eclipse that and, and, and probably move forward. So some of the initiatives, progressing initiatives that we're really proud of. This is a new initiative that, that George Mollick, I wanna give Dr. Mollick uh, full credit here. He has, he has a passion for people that are in a certain profession that, it, that may be looking to, to enhance their career or, or create a better way of life for themselves. And so we internally, we call this the Molly Scully. Um, and so he has came up with a price point that we support, that we can ensure for $12,000 that we can deliver upon that Tarleton degree. These are students that hold those associate degrees that very few institutions across the country are allowing to, to, to enter their doors. And, and that's not access, and that's not opportunity. And so I'm really proud of the work that, that Dr. Mollick and, and, and his team have put forth in to, to uh, create this pathway for these, uh, these working adults to re-enter education, to continue to work and provide for themselves, their families, et cetera. This is gonna be a real game changer. And, and if you think about how Tarleton ranks among the top 10 among social mobility institutions, this is one more way that we can continue to deliver upon that promise. Uh, the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities, APLU, that, that has been an incredible, we talked about it last year. The reason I, I wanted to include it is, is we are still developing that partnership and relationship. It has been a game changer. In fact, Dr. Mark Becker was going to be here today. He's coming back in a few weeks. He had an emergency, was unable to attend. Uh, but he promised me, uh, he and I spoke, he will be here uh, in, the, in the next two to three weeks. He's going to meet with their PAC or executive cabinet. He's going to have a session for any faculty member that wants to come out and listen to how the APLU can continue to make not only Tarleton State a better place, but the communities and the regions, the states that we serve. And then we're continuing our progress to become a senior military uh, designated institution. This is really, really important. DNA, our DNA obviously is ag. It's the DNA of this institution. But we often forget that we were also one of the uh, military colleges many, many, many years ago. And so bringing that back and being one of, I think it would be seven at that point, we, there are eight federally recognized Corps of Cadet programs. Two are in Texas, Texas A&M College Station, Tarleton State, we're very proud of that. Of those eight, six are senior military colleges. Two of us are not. We are not gonna be on the are not list very long. And our Dean uh, and Commandant uh, Simon, would you please stand and allow us to say thank you for your leadership. <clears throat> he con continues to grow the Corps. He's deeply invested in, in ensuring that we are attracting uh, students that carry out the core values, not only of the institution, but the core values of, of the Corps. And we are commissioning. We have increased our commissioning rates every single year and we're one of the fastest growing universities for the commissioning rates in the country and I'm so proud of that. Education beyond these walls. We talk about the rural schools uh, initiative that the TEA we're, we're, for the, our second year, Dr. Ryan Earson, our dean and her team, they are one of the preferred partners and they are producing incredible uh, teachers. One thing that we all know is across the country we have a critical shortage of healthcare providers, in particular nurses and teachers. And we are stepping up to do our part to ensure that we meet both of those needs. And I'm so proud of her and, and the entire College of Education. 
without teachers, nothing else matters. And so we have to have, um, we have to have more teachers. But I believe that our world needs more Texan teachers because of the values that our, our faculty are instilling. You saw the Fossil Realm announcement. We're super excited about this because it's going to create uh, not only in our environmental sciences uh, and, not, and, and even beyond the College of Ag. Barry Lambert and I went out. We met Dean Lambert. We talked with the folks at Fossil Realm. And on our drive back, one thing that we realized was the opportunities that will persist out of this partnership are far beyond the College of Ag. They need business. They need educators. They need lots of other students to help make Fossil Realm what it can be. And that is a treasure. That is an untapped treasure that, that is in our backyard that we're going to fully utilize. We've got a lot of exciting announcements that Dean Lambert and his team will be rolling out over the next year. And of course, what about our Mayfield College of Engineering? And I know that we have the, the, the benefactor of that college, one of our uh, longtime donors, supporters, one of the most beloved Texans, um, Dr. Mayfield, would you, Dr. Mayfield, would you please stand? Thank you for all that you have given the institution and all that you will continue to give to the institution, Dr. Mayfield. He is incredible. He is out there every single day telling the, the Tarleton, Texan story. But I know he is more proud of our rocket team that went out and Jace and those guys, the Cube Satellite launch. I think there were only eight universities in the state, or I'm sorry, in the country that were selected. Tarleton State was one of those. And we won some of the awards out there, and I'm so proud of them. So competing against every institution. Think about the large AAU R1 institutions. Our Texans went down there and, and, um, and represented us so well. And that leads us right into research, innovation, and economic development success. And Dr. Rupa Iyer and her staff continue to blaze new trails and set records. We are uh, launching the Institute for Rural Economic Development. The PERS, which many of you took, play, uh, took part in over the last few years, we're going to continue that effort again this year uh, to the tune of another $1 million investment. That is our President's Excellence in Research Scholars. Later on this year, we're going to have a research celebration and a symposium where, of course, the, the poster presentations will take place, but also we're going to highlight our faculty that are doing incredible work. And we have some of the best faculty-led student research in the nation. And, I, and once again, I double down on this statement. I believe that we can be one of the leading institutions in the country for being an institution that has faculty-led student research. And that's what will create separation between the other R1s that we're chasing. And then, of course, the first, uh, we, we, were, we will receive the first university center funded by the Department of Commerce. There were only two in, in our entire part of Texas that were awarded over a million dollars for this grant, and I'm so thankful for that. Financial strength. We had a record budget this year, roughly $290 million. Now, this is only our operating budget. This isn't the, op uh, the comprehensive budget, which is much larger for the university. But we wanted to break this down in terms of uh, operating. What does it cost to, to um, operate a functioning academy, if you will? And, and so um, we're going to get into the numbers in just a moment. Educational benefits for employees. I've had so many, and thank you. Thank you for allowing us to serve as the educational provider for your, your spouse, your children. Some of you are taking advantage of the Texas A&M initiative where you are earning your doctorate for free. What a great benefit. But we have really benefited from having many of your students, or I'm sorry, your children and your spouses in this program. And we're going to continue to make that investment here at Tarleton State because we are seeing that it is beneficial and that many of you are able to en enhance your um, your earnings potential, but also your, a better way of life for yourself and, and your families. And so that's been a great initiative. I want to thank Eva Lopez and her team and Lori Beatty for the exceptional work that they've been doing with this program to ensure that everyone gets the benefits that we promises, promised. And then also for four consecutive years, we have made merit uh, the non-negotiable and anytime we start a budget process, 
Lori and I start with at least 3 to 4%. We are blessed that every single year we've been able to have 3% merit along with another percent that we use for market adjustments within our colleges. Very, very few institutions across the country are able to do that. In fact, Lori and I have a lot of calls every single week, every single month from presidents and CFOs from across the country trying to understand how are you making this work. And so I'm very proud that we have delivered upon that promise to continue to invest in our human capital. This is a breakdown because I believe in transparency. I believe you should know where Lori is spending all the money. So this is a breakdown. Net, you can see we are still a tuition-dependent institution. We will always be a tuition-dependent institution. So this is a quick breakdown. Roughly 36% of our uh, revenue come from, comes from net tuition and fees. Uh, and you can also see roughly 30% in state appropriations. That 11% student financial assistance is, is federal. So we are still very much dependent upon tuition, state, and, le and federal support. You can see the other sources, net sales, et cetera. Same. All of you should be thankful. We are not spending more than we are making. And so we have a balanced budget. We have balanced that budget every year. And, and I believe that we should spend the money on our people and spend that money on our students and spend that money on our faculty and staff. And so that's why you don't see a five or six million dollar sur surplus that we roll forward. We believe in spending the money um, and enhancing the lives of, of all of our Texans. So you can see roughly 16% uh, for faculty, 16% non-faculty. You can see wages, benefits. That's a majority of our cost here at the institution. And that's no surprise, again, investment in our human capital. And then you can see utilities, operations and maintenance, and, and then, of course, debt service for all the, the incredible construction and, and buildings and facilities that we've had. Some of that debt service we've been carrying for years. Most bonds range from anywhere from 30 to 40, 50 years. Some debt, uh, we, each year we pay off some of that debt to ensure that we are um, financially prudent and, and staying ahead. Workplace well-being. Child Development Center receives educational excellence. Our La Petite program that we launched a few years ago and we, we repurposed an existing facility. They won, they were the best in the nation uh, and, and their category. A, an exceptional experience that we're delivering for many of you. Many of you are taking advantage with your young ones and our little Texans. And because of that work, we received a $1.1 million federal grant. You can see that um, the child care access means parents in school. That means many of our Texans that are in school, single moms, single dads, or moms and dads that are both going to school at the same time, will now have some federal assistance in being able to afford um, child care, not only on our campus, but the communities we serve, whether it's a Fort Worth student, et cetera. Free athletics and performing arts and fine arts tickets. Thank you all for taking advantage of that. It, it, our students love when they see you supporting their efforts, whether it's athletics, whether it's here, watching with Vicki and I, uh, one of our outstanding performances, whether, whether it's theater, band, et cetera. And then again, we are continuing to to invest in opportunities like the Dinosaur Valley that we just had, and employee tailgate. Um, many of you are there having lots of fun, lots of fun, and also the concert that we had this past Sunday, we're going to continue to do those. Athletic success. I'm going to spend the most time here because this is what I'm the most proud of. You heard Ethan and Tatum talk about our athletic success, but and they also highlighted the fact that we have once again, for three consecutive years, had the highest APR in the history of reclassifying institutions. That score of 987 is unheard of. No other institution has been relatively close to that during their reclassification period. And I'm so proud of our student athletes for what they're doing, yes, on the courts and fields, et cetera, but I'm more proud that they're graduating at, a, at, an, at an incredible rate uh, we have a higher retention, and I'm going to also share something with you that for many of our teams, many of our teams, they outpace our non-student athletes for GPA and academic success rates. 
They've had 137 student athletes named to Academic All Wax. So I'm so incredibly proud of them. You can see the successes. I'm not going to, um, I'm just going to kind of go through this slide quickly. Football, men's basketball, you heard Ethan and Tatum. So proud of our coaches and our student athletes for all that they're doing. And then this is one of the reasons, you know, we chose to go to Division I was to enhance and increase our institutional profile. And we are doing that. And so if you look at this slide, Tarleton State, and I want to highlight this, we rank number six among all universities in the country for our social media presence. That's every single Division I school, we rank six. And a lot of that is because athletics is not the most important. We made that very clear when we made this transition. It is not the most important, but it is for us the most visible. And it has brought incredible visibility for our institution. And then you can see the numbers there. 54% increase in merchandise royalties since 2021. Facility enhancements. Event center, we're excited about you know, the uh, groundbreaking. Again, you, you heard the excellent um, presentation and video. That's about 140,000 square feet. Uh, enables us to have some commencements, convocations, concerts, conferences. We did not build this. I love Coach Brock and Coach Gillespie. We have two outstanding basketball coaches that are leading our programs and our cheer and dance. What an incredible pro two programs we have there, national award winning. We did not build this facility just for them. We built this facility for the region. Mayor Savine and, and Judge Huckabee, we've talked about the opportunities that this will bring in terms of conferences, symposiums, et cetera. So this is gonna be a real game changer for our community. Roughly 8,000 seats basketball, 10,000 plus seats for those concerts, et cetera. Groundbreaking soon. Here in the next uh, couple months, we will have our official groundbreaking for our health professions building. I'm going to talk more about this later. Roughly $80 million. Remember, this was funded through CCAP, so our state legislators invested 90,000 plus square feet. This will be a, uh, somewhat attached. We're hoping that we can attach our current nursing building and our health professions building. So this is gonna be a real game changer. Active construction, you all know because you're here. Uh, it has generated new migration patterns for many of us. We added three single surface lots. We will continue to invest in parking. We will continue to invest in, uh, in increasing and in ensuring that our pathways and throughways on campus are ADA accessible. We had the audit a few years ago that we um, we wanted to ensure that all Texans felt like they were part of this institution. We knew that we had some walkways and throughways that were not ADA accessible. We are addressing, addressing those in, in, some, in a singular manner. This is one of the projects, Heritage Park, and, and the, just the sheer beautification of this, uh, of this space. Coming soon. I don't know how this ended up being like a perfect E, but it, it is. Um, I doubt it will look like that. But we uh, are seeking approval from the Board of Regents. We've already, Lori and I have already laid the groundwork. We've had conversations for a 1,000-plus bed residence hall. We all know that we need about 4,000 new beds on campus. We have roughly 4,300 beds to ensure that all, every single freshman and sophomore has an opportunity to reside on campus over the next five to eight years. We need to add about 4,000 beds. The reason that number is important. We, we have seen the 80 plus percent statistic that if those students stay on campus, and I'm only talking about main campus, for those first two years, we have a much higher rate of retaining that student and that student graduating. Library expansion, this looks small, but it is not. I mean, Dick Smith is very large. We're adding about 10 to 12,000 square feet. So our students will have a full access 24 hour um, learning I call it center, but that's not the proper word, but space for our students to reside in. So that'll be open 24-7. And if you do not think that students roam this campus 24 hours, come and hang out with Kendall and I for a night on, at the Trogdon House. They're up all hours of the night. And so this will be heavily utilized. I think it'll be a great start to what we need to continue to expand our library over the coming years. And of course, our research part. We, if you've taken the loop out by the AgriLife research. That facility is our facility. That's a Tarleton State facility. That's going to be our new research park that we're super excited and proud about. External growth. Dr. Rachel 
Cap will have. Dr. Cap is, is and her team are doing incredible work across our extended campuses. Global Passport Program, this is something her and Dr. Ben have worked very hard to ensure that every single international student understands the process and we help them navigate that process. We've not been great at that over the years. And so we've got to, we've got to be better and we've got to do better and we're going to continue to improve there. The Pathway Programs, the Texan Gateway to Success, our program with, with Ranger. We have students that are living on our campus that are duly enrolled in Ranger and Tarleton State and they're incredibly successful. They'll matriculate right into our bachelor's program and they're going to be uh, successful. And then, of course, there are Distinguished College Partnership Program, nine community college partners, and we're excited. That has really helped us increase our transfer rates. Our Fort Worth IPE building is about 60 to 65% uh, complete. I was out there Sunday uh, walking the grounds, and that is going to be just a showcase facility. Everyone in southwest Tarrant County, southwest, southwest Fort Worth, they're excited about this building because of the opportunities that we can engage our community and the communities that we serve there in Southwest Tarrant. This is a real game changer for our institution. It adds another 100,000 square feet to continue our programmatic development. It also allows us to add another two to 3,000 students um, there at that campus. So our better health for rural North Texas for two consecutive years I'm sorry, for two consecutive sessions, both the 87th session and the 88th session. The 87th session, our, our legislators awarded us $2 million to launch the development of these programs. In the 88th session, they gave us another $5 million because they, they saw the, the investment that we were, uh, the original investment that we were making good on that investment and we had started the programs. Well, I am proud to announce and I want, if I hope, I'm not sure if these three are here, so if I call them out and they're not, that means they're out recruiting new faculty. Let's go with that. So Dr. Uh, uh, Diaz and Dr. Le Lewandowski and Dr. Uh, James, are you, are any of you three here? Would you stand up? All right. Good. We are so excited, and I know they are, and I, I I meant that with all sincerity. They are on the road every single day. They are recruiting faculty. They're building out the curriculum. And we have officially launched. And we, all three of these programs are deep into the accreditation process. Our first program will launch in 2025. And we'll have all these programs through 2025 through roughly 2027. We're trying to get one of those programs in the 2026 cycle. Uh, all three programs we can officially announce and, and now start. We can't recruit. So I'm not saying that we're recruiting yet, but we are recruiting faculty, we're recruiting staff, and we're building out these programs. We will have three exceptional programs, a PA, OT, and PT. And these three ladies are going to do an absolute incredible job building. And we also just found out that we were moved to the head of the queue for our nursing anesthetist program. So now that curriculum is being developed. And I can't be more thankful for Dr. Ramona Parker and her leadership and, and how she is, is sculpting and, and, and really reinventing uh, our rural health care initiatives. I want to share these statistics because we're almost finished, and I want to leave you with some of this. This is really, really important. So why are we investing so heavily in our health sciences? Over 50 million Americans live in rural America today. And all of these statistics I want to give um, credit, and I want to cite the source, that's the National Rural Health Association. So NRHA is our kind of Bible here at, at, as we develop these institutions. And you're going to see the next couple slides attributed to their work. Look at this. These, some of these are, are, are concerning. The percent of population, so roughly 20% of Americans live in rural. That number, as we know, since COVID is, continues to grow, and it is growing significantly. The number of physicians per 10,000 people Look at the discrepancies. 13% for us, 31%. The number of specialties, 30 versus 263 per 100,000 persons. Look at the population, 65. We are older. We are aging faster. We need more. We need better and more access to healthcare practitioners. And then the adults that describe their health status as poor, not roughly 20% to 15, 16%. But here's the biggest concern. Stephenville, this, uh, we only drilled down to this 
to our city, main campus. Look at the patient-physician ratio. It stands at nearly 1,800 patients for one physician. Look at that other rate. We are significantly, significantly underserved. This is one city, so think about this. Let's put this in context. We're here in Stephenville, Texas, where we have a growing, thriving, comprehensive national university. Think about the cities that we serve, the communities that we serve, that aren't blessed to have a Tarleton Saint. Think about how those numbers look. I'm going to guess that those numbers are two or three times more dire. To break it down even further, why rural matters. Look, 135 rural hospitals have closed since 2010 alone. 453 are in the vulnerable, which means they are on the brink of closure. On the brink of closure. 453. This number, in case you can't see it, is 41% of that number are in Texas. Those are the hospitals that we are associated with. Those are where many of our nursing students are going and working. That's why we're doubling down on our PA, our OT, and our PT. But we've got to do more. We've got to think about, is Tarleton the right place to start thinking about addressing the primary care physician shortage? And I say we are. But we're going to need more help than just me. Right? So that's going to be our focus. Are we the right place to help address this rural primary care health shortage over the coming years? And so I want to close with this. I want to close by saying that you, each of you, are the heartbeat of this institution. And we're so incredibly thankful for each of you. So we, we're making some, some additional investments. Our study abroad, study away fund. We're going to continue the monies that we're already investing, which is significant. We're going to add another $250,000 to ensure that our students and faculty and staff will have the ability to go. Many of you that are faculty and staff that travel with our students and study away and study abroad, you are essentially free, right? Well, we know nothing's free. That, that cost is baked into the cost for each student. And so we're going to ensure that our faculty and staff are, are paid for. We're going to pay for our faculty and staff to be able to go. We want more faculty and staff to be able to go and lead and mentor and build these incredible relationships with our students. By virtue of that, that will reduce the cost of our students or for each student to attend one of these experiential learning opportunities or study abroad opportunities. Plus, we're going to continue to invest part of this money into ensuring that their cost is low. Back to that 38, 39%. Those students can't afford to go to Urbino. And what an incredible life-changing experience for those students. We're going to continue to invest in their faculty and staff development. We added more this past year in each budget for a dean. Lori and I said we've got to do more. So we found a, an extra $250,000 that, I, that we took out of the University Strategic Initiative Fund to create more opportunities for our faculty and staff to go and professionally develop and, and grow. And that's really, really important. We want to continue to invest in you. And so on top of what your deans and department heads or, or directors have, we're going to invest even more. And then the last is our commitment to ensure that we continue to address our compensation commitment. The merit, that's top priority budget, I'm sorry, top budget priority every single year. We have a goal to raise every single person that's roughly making $30,000 to $40,000. We're taking a big step this year. Every single employee that's at the $30,000 threshold will move to $35,000. And you will see that um, in this next check. Secondly, many of our departments, we are moving from $35,000 to forty. dollars Now, that's a small number. That number here is very small. We've worked very hard to address that. But for that small number, we're going to continue to move the needle and get everyone to, to a point where they feel valued and, and get them to a livable wage. That's just a start. We're not stopping there. And then again, we're going to continue to align compensation with our faculty and our staff, not with our peers, 
because we're leaving our peers behind. I don't want to be compared to my peers. I want to be compared to the, to the aspirants. So we're going to ensure that we get our faculty and staff alignment, in particular our faculty with our aspirational institutions. That's how we continue to grow. That's how we continue, continue to keep our best and brightest, and that's how we continue to attract those. So thank you so much. I want to close with, with this story. Last, a few weeks ago, I was walking campus and a young lady, and I promised I wouldn't embarrass her. And I said, can I tell your story? And she said, yes. She had no idea who I'm going to share it with. She, she'll be happy, but she'll know exactly who she's talking about. She said, Dr. Hurley, I, I'm a sophomore. She was nervous. She said, I, I was told that you launched this program. And she said, I went and watched your video, The Tarleton Promise. She said, I want you to know that I'm a Tarleton Promise student. My, my grandmother passed away. She lives in Fort Worth. My grandmother passed away during COVID. She was the only person, the only person that I had in my life. Uh, didn't know her mom. Didn't know her dad. And I asked, I said, you might have a mom and dad. She said, yes, but they abandoned me years ago. And it's been me and grandma. It was me and grandma. And I lost my grandma. I had nowhere else to turn. And, I, and thankfully, one of her high school counselors, one of her high school counselors took care of that young lady. She learned, the counselor, Javier, learned about our Tarleton Promise program. She had no money. She had no opportunity. And she said, because of our Tarleton Promise I'm able to attend. She said, I was considering going to um, a, a, a technical college program, and I was going to cos cosmetology school, and I thought that was my only way out. And, and the counselor showed me Tarleton State, and we came and visited. She brought, the counselor brought her here. And I said, so tell me what you're going to do. She said, I want to be a doctor. I want to go back, and I want to help ensure that other people don't die of a dreaded disease like COVID. Here we have a homeless, first-generation poverty product. She's here. She's thriving. And she said, thank you for the letter that you sent me. I said, what letter did I send you? <laughs> she said, the president's list. I made the president's list, and I'm going to make it every single year. That's the power of higher education. That's the power of public higher education. And that's the power of Tarleton State University. And that's the power that each of you have, that you will continue to influence and make a difference in a single student like Alicia. You're going to make a difference in her life. And she's going to thrive and she's going to become the best physician in all of Fort Worth because she is passionate and you're showing her the way. So thank you for Bleeding Purple. Thank you for your investment and, and, and your intellect into these, these students. They need you. We need you. So thank you for an awesome year. It's going to be another incredible year. I hope we have great stories to tell again. We love you. Kendall and I are so thankful to be part of this family. We have so much more work ahead. We're going to continue to do great work, but we're going to, do continue, we're going to continue to do great work together. So may you forever bleed purple. Roll Texans. for your leadership and continuing to push our university forward. At this time, would you remain standing for the singing of the color song?
you all so much for being here today and for everything you do for Tarleton and our students. Don't forget to grab a Dublin soda on your way out, a to-go treat, and a copy of the strategic plan on your way out, and enjoy the remainder of your Purple Thursday. Thank you.